artwork there you go <coughs> oh, Christopher John how you doing Just trying to figure something out here. Um, so this is a nine. Let's see, uh, right there. Um, so I am working on uh, pages actually I'm working on pages for a book um, I'm also working on a a 94 page 194 page and then several pages for another project for someone else and then this thing here this thing here is just for uh, a pet pro it's a pet project honestly um, Yeah, every year I do a sketchbook of some sort, and uh, this is just going to be something goofy for it. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's a Spidey. Yeah, it's a Spidey 300. It, it is a Spidey 300 swipe. And I, every book I do that's like a floppy edition, I always end up doing a... The, two, the rule I have is the rule of two. I have... A Spidey 300 and a Spidey 1 swipe. So I do them for like everything just because. For myself, they're just, uh, they're kind of fun. They're kind of fun to do. So I'm just kind of deciding though. I don't know if I want to hand color this or if I want to uh, do it in Adobe. I might just, I might just do it in Photoshop. Yeah, I think I'll just do it in Photoshop, but... Yeah, this is just decompression for me right now. Um, give my eyes a little bit of a rest. I was, I've been working on other stuff pretty much all day. I was on uh, uh, Dojo. Dojo had a stream <clears throat> on... Uh, crowdfund fulfillment and I was on that and uh, started working on a page had some dinner came back to a page and I'm just like I just need to reduce my eyeballs need to rest from it so I'm like oh I'll just do another another little inky piece Yeah, and it's not very often that I do pieces that don't really have, you know, like a super serious purpose to them. So. Now this one here, I'm going to practice a little bit of 
some shading stuff I've been messing with a little bit, and uh, I'll see if it works out. Uh, I do need to get all the contours of things uh, inked out on it first. So. Yeah, just having fun. I figure there's enough streams going right now that uh, probably not going to be a whole lot of viewers in here. Um, I don't know if you caught the... <clears throat> I don't know if you caught the, uh, the stream last night I was on. Um, on the Barton stream. And that one was... That one was pretty cool. I ended up knocking out a piece on there, um, and it, it took me so long. It took me so long to finish that. There, I'll bring it over here so you can see. You're the only one in here right now, so. Um, yeah. So this was from their their uh, their comic Kozor that they have in demand on Indiegogo right now, so. Yeah, I did this on their on their channel, and it turned out pretty cool for a little. I can't even really call it a quick a quick sketch because I think it took like uh, three hours or so to, to knock out. Silver, how's it going? Yeah, so yeah, this thing here, it's a like I said, it's just a decompression piece, just something for me to mindlessly draw. Um, purposely laid out a character that has no specific form and he's just uh, if you like read the title, he's pretty much just made a meatloaf, I guess. But if he turns out, if he turns out looking kind of cool I'm going to throw them into uh, the Rage book for fun. Jan, how's it going? Yeah, this is not this is not a not a Fight Club meatloaf.
But yeah, anyways, yeah, last couple streams, last couple streams I was on were uh, pretty cool, pretty cool to be a part of. Where is my brush? Hockey, how's it going? So, yeah, every year I tend to do these um, kind of bizarre looking cover pieces for my sketchbook that end up being like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, hey Joe, how's it going? Um, they end up being the uh, art drop pieces. Uh, essentially, just kind of hit up places in town and uh, load it up with advertisements for you know, like my current campaign or stuff I got on my website or whatever. Um, and then the, like th something like this will end up like that, like a cover for one of those things that I'm, uh, you know, throwing in an envelope and leaving it at like a, uh, you know, like a top, like a Taco Bell restroom. Like it's just completely bizarre placement. Um, but yeah, I did that last year. Um, and I'm going to do it again this year, just because. So what's um what has everybody been up to? Any news? Anything exciting?
Nothing exciting. Uh, well, you need to change that. You need to figure out some excitement. Yeah, you got any uh, any book recommendations? I haven't I haven't actually physically read a book in like a decade. Um, I'm trying to think what audiobooks I did. I did the Lord of the Rings audiobooks last, I think. Um, but those were just sort of in the car.
Oh, there's a lot more people that came in. Hey Mo, how's it going? Michael T, how you doing? Random Task. What is up? Todd's Truth, how are you? Oz, how are you? Yeah, this is probably going to be the most random art stream that I do. Let me re I'll rephrase that. The most random stream I'll do this month. <clears throat> I'm sure there's going to be more. Hey Jam, how's it going? So I had heard that uh, StreamYard has some sort of deal going right now. I'm probably going to, it's probably a good time to get it. So I'm going to probably do it. I'm uh, talking to a buddy of mine. He might come in and, and help, help me with that while I draw. Got to see what his schedule is like. <clears throat> He's got some regular work, regular work stuff going on. So, Also got to figure out my uh, my external monitor. Want it? I guess my Cintiq's a monitor too, but my main external monitor that I use um, has been like having an issue. I think it's my video card, so it's not wanting to display up here above me um, while I'm streaming. So it's made it a little bit more difficult to see kind of what's going on chat and all that. Rick, how's it going, man? Hello again to Rick in case it... I, I just looked over at the screen and saw it was like refreshing, so I don't know if my internet was going out. We have a... Uh, 
another storm, surprise. So I probably actually shouldn't even be streaming right now because of it, um, but I live dangerously. Luckily, I have everything backed up, so if I did have any issue with a, a surge or whatnot, I got everything backed up. But yeah, I'm thinking I'd probably take the stream yard leap and get a buddy of mine to come in and and talk and bring people up and all of that. <clears throat> Bad random test is bad time to need a video card. You are correct. You're correct. Um, I wouldn't buy a video card right now because you can't find them. And also my, what I'm streaming through, you guys are watching me through a laptop actually, believe it or not. So it's not a, uh, it's not a, a PC or whatnot. So, um, and laptops are not built to last with streaming and everything else. They burn out. That's one of the issues is, is uh, I've been using my, my system for, you know, art production. And I, I kill the CPU every day at least once. Like, it's just a thing that happens. So, yeah, no. Next system I get is going to be a pre-built... Um, but yeah, I imagine by you know Christmas time or whatnot, they're, they're probably going to be readily like easy, easy to find, easier to find, I should say. So everyone has those issues right now. You got there's lots, there's car lots out here right now that have uh, you know three, four hundred, three or four hundred trucks sitting on the lot that they can't sell because they don't have the um, they don't have the computers, you know, like like COVID threw everything off. So there's a supply chain issue right now with video cards, um, automotive computers, you know, all that. Um, I didn't know that trucks were assembled without those. I didn't know that the dealer orders them and that they're, um, you know, like a thing that they kind of do, you know, at the lot. I thought it was something kind of like pre-installed, but I guess not. <clears throat> Where am I? Here we are. So anyways, yeah, I got uh, four pages that I'm staring at in the works and my eyes... Um, kind of been going all day my eyes are kind of crossing a little bit and and instead of getting a headache I'm just gonna clear the palette with a new piece and and all that I was watching uh, when we were eating dinner I was watching um, the movies that made us it was the one on back to the future and I had a lot of stuff in there I didn't know I thought I I thought I had known everything about you know um, the making of it at least. I've seen so many things on it, but it had quite a bit in there about um, the Bob, you know, Bob Zemeckis and who's the writer? Uh, Bob Gale? No. Bob something. Anyways, yeah, there's a lot in it that I had no idea. So it's kind of cool. Kind of cool to see different vantage points sometimes of stuff.
close out my brush here. Where's this thing at? Yeah, I think I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get these contours knocked out and then I'm going to start spotting. There's gonna be a lot of heavy shadows. I'm gonna do a little bit with splatter and stuff too. Matt, how are you doing? One forty four P. That's crazy. My output was one forty four. I think I have it I think I have my output set to ten eighty, so it might just be crummy internet. <clears throat> crummy internet. Crummy weather. Arizona weather. So crummy. Everything's crummy. I'm not the only one though that um on that stream uh, with Dojo, uh, I think like half the panel has issues right now with um, weather, weather issues, you know, with stuff knocking it out and all that. I think this I think this stream should have I should have used that uh my boring art stream thumbnail. So thank you guys for entertaining yourselves while I doodle. Oh uh Silver says incoming oh YouTube updated and it auto defaults. Okay. Yeah, there's sometimes, um, no, Matt, this is not super, <laughs> mummer is super, this is not even, this isn't even a mummy. This is not, this is just a guy. This is a, a guy with no, he's full of void. He's full of void. He's not a, he's not really a thing. Um, he's a uh, meatloaf, two quotation marks. That's what he is. Yeah, he's he is literally meatloaf. But yeah, as I explaining, so sometimes I'll do these little like preview books of things that I'm working on, and I'll and I'll uh, I'll I'll front load the book with um links and stuff like things that i'm trying to promote like trying to gain backers or trying to promote for like online sales on you know ebay or whatever it doesn't matter what it is it's a promotion tool and um what i do is i do these art drops like locally i was saying um you know i'll hit up places like the laundromat i'll hit up like it's like le legitimately like restrooms at like you know uh, uh taco bell or whatever Chipotle, it doesn't matter. Like I just hit them up, and then I'll just like leave one of these in there, uh, the printed book, you know. And then uh, it's actually it's worked. I mean, you know, sometimes there people will come across like because it's just this weird, um, you know, package, and um, yeah, it's got kind of like a one of a kind book in it, and it just has all my you know all the stuff for uh, promotion and that. So. Um, we live really close to the university too, so um, it's a good place to plant. Good place to plant some books, and uh, it usually it usually does turn into people that had no idea, you know, that they might be interested in comics or whatever. And uh, it's a good it's a good conversation starter. But yeah, that's my plan with it. This is just going to be a cover, one of those little, kind of like a leaflet, I guess. Kind of like a leaflet. Um, some people use the art drop thing, like San Diego Con and that. Um, they use it like a treasure hunt sort of thing. I don't use it that way. I use it just for marketing. I use it for marketing. I used to do it at comic conventions and stuff. Um until one day I found one of them. I found a book, I found a book in a trash can and 
the funniest thing to me is too is like for that particular one i had it like it was numbered on the front like there was only 10 of that particular book um yeah and they like threw it away it so weird so as soon as i saw that i was like you know ah oh, these people don't deserve this not at cons not at comic cons so uh i just do it in other places now places where you know you're gonna find people into you know genre stuff but they're just maybe not aware of uh or a hundred percent not aware of my campaign it's i have very few um locals uh backing my backing my book so um it's a visibility it's a visibility thing and it's a write-off it's advertising it's exactly Oz, Oz great knows what's up Shelby going into restrooms juggling balls for passion that is exactly <laughs> Matt's says meatloaf with the croutons baked in mom did that and so gross yeah yeah it is gross it is gross you got some bacon strips going across and you ever, um, if you guys want to be grossed out, um, Google, what was it called? Rat loaf? If you Google rat loaf, people will make meatloaf that looks like, um, rats, and they'll use croutons for the teeth and the eyeballs and stuff. Like, it, it'll make you want to vomit, so I suggest everyone go look at that right now. Someone pull it up and, uh, drop the link in the chat. Yeah, drop links in the chat. You got something you're trying to promote? Shill away. Someone wants to promote uh, Rage Tality, feel free as well. Um, I picked up a few backers uh, last night and this morning after doing the uh, uh, the How to Draw Comic stream with uh, with uh, Clayton Burton. So. Yeah, it's um, it was definitely fun. I like his approach. I like that he's just very, um, very much more professional than I am as far as approaching questions and the overall attitude of like comics in general. I'm kind of a cynic. I've just been working in comics for so long that that it does that to you. It's like. Um, if you've worked somewhere for long enough, eventually it's going to change you a little bit. And uh, cynic cynicism is the uh, the change that has occurred with me. And some pessimism too. What's going on here? Um, oh, gross. Silver Sun. I uh, had a girlfriend who made her meatloaf half raw oats. Yeah, that's gross. Um, let's see here.
There you go, hockey. Hockey got a wrench. Now hockey, hockey can now fix your sinks. He's got the wrench to fix the sink. So, yeah, this is gonna be as soon as I get as soon as I get rolling on this, it'll. It'll be kind of easy. And this is not going to be a long stream, guys, all right? It's going to be, like, literally going to be this, some splatter uh, rendering within the contour of this, and, you know, that's going to be about it. Um, I'm not going to put a ton of effort in this piece. It's just for fun. For fun and for promotion and juggling balls in bathrooms. I'm done with this, I'll probably jump over. If anyone else is streaming, I'll probably jump over to chat and hang out a little bit while I'm working on those pages. I just, the pages I'm working on, I can't necessarily like show them off because um, they're not coming out till I think next year. It's not my book. So, respecting the privacy of that work. Okay, so random task. Yes, yeah, ran, yeah, random task. For, yeah, Kling, he's he was really good. He's good. He's he's a uh, uh, hundred times the host that I will ever be for sure. Rick Sailor's all over it, letting people know about stuff. Yeah, the lost pages too. Sign up. Uh, does anyone in chat know? Did um. Did Phil ever do the, the artwork giveaway yet, or is he still working on that? Because he was going to have a drawing on the, on the uh, or was he waiting for the signups to end before he did that, uh, uh, the art, you know, the drawing. He was doing a blind drawing, I think, for everyone that signs up as long, or I guess it will, you know what, never mind. I think it's for people who actually back it, so I guess that's going to be, I just answered my own question. Never mind me. Never mind me. Um, well, thanks, Rick. Rick says he loves the piece that I did for Lost Pages. I do agree. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome for what it was. Um, 
Yeah, because when I was working on it during that stream, Phil was um, he was messaging me. He goes, "Hey, uh, could I throw you some some cash if you throw some color on that?" And I was like, "Sure thing, Brotherhood." I didn't I didn't charge him nothing on. It. I was like, "No, nah, dude, it's I want to help. I want his campaign to do well." All is good in the hood. But I know people really enjoy it. Like he's a very he's a very good writer. I know people like his uh a lot of his his uh hot takes in his books and stuff and it's uh I read through the first lost pages and it was um it was a good read. Um I think he'd he definitely should be like in the like a top five, you know, like a top five Indiegogo book, I think. Um, so hopefully, Lost Pages Two kind of does that for him. I think it. I think it's going to happen eventually. For Phil, at least. For Phil, it'll happen. Really like this this uh, this brush tip here. Cool cool uh, line variants. <clears throat> um, Rick says I actually wasn't gonna back Mavericks till I saw your cover. Plus the R.O. piece was sick. Cool man. Yeah, um, yeah, I haven't visited, I haven't visited the, the, uh, the campaign for Mavericks since the launch day, I guess. Um, I was there at launch and I, uh, jumped on it as soon as I saw, saw it was live, um, So I have no idea how well, you know, I, I hope the cover's doing well for them, the, the piece that I did. I know they got, they got some big, uh, Neff, ha, Neff has some big plans for that book, you know, in the future too, so... I think you're, I think everyone's gonna get to see, um... You know, like when you when you're kind of there in the beginning, and then like you know, five years later, you see kind of where the book ended up. Um, I think that's going to be a cool journey for uh, the Mavericks Mavericks comic.
Sorry guys, head is like looking straight down. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a second. What did someone someone said? Uh, Bisley, Bisley, or Lobo? Is that what you guys are talking about? Yeah, um, Oz says Godlike, Arc or Athena, or my next Raider next. Yeah, um, Kennedy's book is gonna be freaking insane. Um, I think Malin's Godlike is gonna be an interesting book too. I think a lot of people are gonna jump on that. Rick Sailor says hashtag Lobo. Hashtag Lobo, and for anyone that doesn't know, Lobo is, um, I gotta let this thing dry for a little bit so I can, I can share with you if you'd like. Um, so here's two volumes of Lobo I have right next to my desk, and it's, uh, in my opinion, this one's pretty cool because it has infanticide and some of the other short stories, but this one right here's got, um, all of volume one and volume two. So Lobo and Lobo's back. Um, as you know, so this cover here... This is the one that I did the, uh, here I'll show you. I still have it right here. Just cover it. I'm looking for this cover that I did. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. I found it. There we go. So I know everyone's so excited. Everyone's so excited about the free, the free uh, Ashcan sketchbook. So, yeah, I'll show you for comparison. So this is the cover I did, and then uh, I should move this. I don't want to get this ink crap on my book. There we go. Um, here we go. So that's the original Lobo cover. I gotta wait for this thing to. How far over can I go with this? Right here? I think right there. Yeah, so that's the original Lobo cover there. And then this was the one that I did on my own. And believe it or not, uh, I freehanded this. Like, I didn't, like, I wasn't looking at this one trying to. I just knew that he was biting the lip and the right eye was larger than the left. So I think I did pretty good, like based on like memory, right? Like it's pretty close. And then, um, so this is gonna be the the cover of the free sketchbook Ashcan that everyone gets with the, with the Rachality War book. And um, I'm also going to, just because I think this is kind of cool, I'm gonna do a, a Rage logo that looks kind of like this, like the shiny metal. You know, and I'll probably emulate the little blood splatter thing here and that. Um, just kind of doing my own thing, but no, I'm happy with it. I, I think it turned out like for me. The easiest thing was I remembered that if you if you were to divide this page here, that dot is dead center of the page. If you were to measure it equally here to here, it's in the center, and then here to here, it's in the center. That that eyeball. So that's what I remembered about that when I was younger. I actually measured it out. And then um, also that the lighting was a uh, top left lighting, real hard light. So all the light is focused right here. And I remembered that. And then I also remembered that he had a squinty eye and then a very wide eye and he was biting. The thing I didn't do right, <laughs> I didn't realize it until I was looking at it, was I did two, he only has one little blood thing and I made it where it's like he's biting that lip hard. So, you know, both, both canines are, are uh, affecting that bottom lip. I didn't realize... Um, Simon only did the one side, but yeah, not too bad. I think I, I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. I think I did okay with it. Yeah, but anyways. Phil's, Phil's probably actually here watching. He's probably just not saying anything. He's probably waiting for the, the right moment to strike. 
Or he's in a stream. I don't know. I have no idea who's streaming right now. YouTube's the worst. It didn't tell me, um, it didn't tell, like, the only reason I knew that, uh, uh, Jason Bascom's, um, his, his little 30 minute sketch off thing, um, the only reason I knew that was because we were both on the same stream before he went live with it and he, he talked about it. Um, YouTube did not even tell, I never even got the, the update saying that he went live. Um, so I had to go to his channel and, and like, yeah, there it was, it was live. And I'm like, dude, I'm subscribed to this. Like, why is this not, why is this not telling me this? I'm actually twice subscribed to, I have two YouTube accounts and I, and I'm subscribed on both of them. So I have an old one, um, which was one that we had to use for the game, the gaming company. Um, so that was one they delegated to me before I even had a YouTube account at all. And I still have that one. I still have the access to it. So um, what I do is I sub to my own channels using that one so that I can see if others can see, you know, that my stuff's live or whatnot. Um, yeah. So it just kind of makes me wonder how much stuff I'm actually missing because of, uh, you know, YouTube not giving up a heads up or whatever. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and erase all this here. I got majority of the, I feel like I got majority of this stuff already taken care of, so. What's that? Still got to finish that other hand. I'll just do it lightly. So yeah, think of this character as uh, like Clayface if he was made out of uh, if he was made out of meatloaf, right? It's kind of how you can think of him. And he's not he's not even really a character. Like I said, he's just he's gonna be a cover of something I'm gonna do kind of for fun. But yeah, like everything else, um, it kind of keeps it fresh. I noticed if I if I give myself a little bit of me time and not like uh, not like watching TV me time more because even when I watch TV, I'll have a drawing pad on my lap and I'm still drawing. Um, but I I've been that way since I was like five years old. Um, me time just being like pieces like this, they're just nonsense, you know, um, it kind of keeps it fresh and makes it easier to go back to, like, the real stuff, you know, like the serious stuff that you gotta knock out and keep the energy level up. There's Jason, I was just talking, were your, were your ears burning? I was just talking about you. I was just letting him know that you're, uh, I never even got an update that you were, that you were live. I just knew because we were on the same stream. But yeah, I stuck around. I stuck around Jason's stream for a little bit, and then uh, I got yelled at that dinner was ready, and then I went and ate. It's usually how it goes. Shelby starts something, and then he gets yelled at.
Yeah, dude. Unhinged says, thanks for swinging by, and I say, absolutely. <laughs> I need to get Hockey to write my next, um, my next pitch, I think. Because that's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And later this week, I'm gonna have a uh, I'm gonna have a lamp stream. Actually, I'm gonna show everyone my lamp. I'm very proud of it. I tried to show it the other night, but I couldn't. Um, it's too far away, so the cord doesn't reach. I know everyone is very excited. Might do it. Might do it during the day, just because. I'd hate for my lamp stream to affect other streamers. Can't live with the guilt. Um, Unhinged asks if I give any more thought on the StreamYard. Uh, I'm probably gonna just get it, dude. Um, I was told yesterday and today, I think, that they have a pretty good deal going with it right now, apparently. I haven't checked, but I was told that they had a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, and then that would open up a few doors for me as far as, like, uh, not being the boringest, mismanaged stream on YouTube. Um, but, I mean, I kind of don't mind. I'm used to being really horrible with, with streaming, so it might throw off my game. for some reason.
engagement is important. I'm just, uh... I get in the zone and I forget that other people exist. <laughs> Thank you, Hockey. Yeah, so, um, right now I have uh, Unhinged talking about they like the video quality. Uh, Jason's saying I'm not boring. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, when you have iTunes on. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so maybe that's a, maybe I need to put that in the description. I need to say, um, uh, put on your favorite album and just watch this stream, right? Put on your favorite album because otherwise, you're gonna wish you put on your favorite album. That's funny. Um, I ordered some. I ordered some of those ze the zebra nibs, you know. So I'm gonna. I'll probably play with those on a stream. People are gonna be mad though when I'm doing like nib inks. I'm not like Jason. I don't. Um, I don't entertain. It's kind of like think of right now, except for even less talking. Like just think of that. Like let that sink in. Because nib nib inking to me is. Uh, it's very tedious, so I, I... I have issues with it. Even though I like the I like the finished product, I do I do have issues with it. So I just don't have the confidence level when it nib inking and stuff. It's it's just very different. And when you get in the flow of it with the nib and stuff, it's it's like uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. You know, it's almost like a basketball player trying to shoot threes. Like you're not gonna like stop him and like ask him questions while he's like in the middle of the air. It's that sort of thing with the nibs for me. Like I can't do two things. I can barely do two things right now. Um, but. Thankfully, everyone has iTunes. iTunes going. Yeah, so. Tom Rohn wants me to draw and ink wearing hand puppets. Um, I might. I might do that. Tom, is, um... Is T.O. is T.O. still, like, fenced up? Like, are you able to get in there? Like, if we, if we were to go... Like, if we were to go do batting practice over there, are they, are they still fenced up? Or... Because I looked at Google Maps a while back, and it, do, it doesn't show you. Tom, by the way, is a lifelong... Lifelong friend. Tom and I have known each other for at least 600 years. Tom and I used to ride bikes to the comic book store to pick up things like Todd McFarlane's Amazing Spider-Man, and uh, what else were we collecting? Oh, another big one that I know that we all got, because we didn't all have the same collect collecting taste, but uh, I know that all of us picked up Gotham by Gaslight. I remember when we all got that for some reason. Um, 
Tom, I don't know if I told you, the writer that, um, Brian Augustine, he's actually local. I used to do some events with him, um, and there was a little bit of discussion about doing a project with him. Uh, he's like, a, he's like super old, he's super old now. He ended up having, I don't know, he's got like some super weird beef with me for some reason. I don't know what it is. Mmm. Locked up like a prison. So they got all those kids in there. And they can't even go back to have fun after school hours. They can't even go back to do any batting practice or kickball. It's the other one, tetherball. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, when I get, whenever I get my, the streaming thing situated, I'll bring you on. We can just kind of like shoot the shit, talk about stuff. Um, I'll have to get Steve on. We'll get Steve on here too. I don't know if Steve's camera shy though. Do you remember, um, did you did you come down to extreme? Did you Tom, did you come down to extreme with um when uh did you come down with Barry? Or was that Steve? I don't remember who came down. Um I was given I was given like a little like office tour of like Frega's office and then uh Platts and um Rob and Matt Hawkins were acting all like super weird because they didn't know who like anyone was. I just remember that um, we freaked Steve out because he thought he thought Frego was gonna like stick something in his butt. Oh, was it Steve? Oh, so he did come down? Because he was afraid of Dan. I think we were, we were like, in the process of uh, brainwashing him, telling him that, like, Dan wanted to do, like, weird things with him. Yeah. I just don't remember who, who it was that came down. Um, but when they came, so when they came down, Tom, it was, uh, uh, MD Dangerously says what would constitute weird at the Extreme Studios back in the day. Um, I don't, I don't know, foreign objects or fisting or something. Um, <laughs> So Tom, we actually, yeah, we talked about that on several streams. Um, I've been on with Frega and have talked about that and brought it up because he, like, he didn't really remember. And I was like, dude, do you remember we did this thing and with Dietrich and Pat and and all that and people not believing that it was a thing. It's like, oh yes, if you fart in a bag, you can in a Ziploc, it will say you can save it for like months, and. Uh, it, it actually gains potency. It's bizarre. It's the weirdest thing. Um, I mean, it kind of makes sense because, like, meth I don't know, methane gas in, in a freezer bag, right? Let's see here. I'm gonna get this thing. 
I like um, I like very geometric shapes and stuff for like the uh, the spotted black areas that I use, but since this guy is made out of like pizza sauce or whatever meatloaf, he's I can't really do that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna digitally color this. I was gonna hand color it, but I'm using this uh, this filler black here, which is this uh, super black, and I don't think it works well with Copics, so I'll have to uh, I'll have to do some digital digital some digital colors. Yeah, if you um, if anyone follows me, if anyone follows me on uh, Instagram or whatever, uh, Unhinge asks, "Do you freeze it?" Um, yes. Yeah, it was a thing that we did at Fregas. Um, we spoke about it several times, where um, we were we had a bet whether or not you could freeze a fart, and um, you you absolutely can. And it's disgusting. And um, someone unnamed in the studio lost the bet because they threw open a trash can as soon as they opened it up and put their nose in it. This this is Extreme Studios in '96, I think, is when the incident occurred. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you if you were to see me and uh, Tom Ronan chat, and then our buddy Steve and Barry, and we'll even throw Monty in the mix. We were basically like the Burger Kings, the, like the kids club, almost like, like Tom is Mexican, um, I, I'm Czechoslovakian white, uh, Steve is Filipino, Barry, what is Barry, Tom? What, did, what, what nationality would you say he is? He's, uh, his mom is Thai, but his dad's, I don't know if his dad is like full on white. We were definitely a mixed bunch. We all had good taste in comics though. We were all into the same, the same, uh, you know, all the same image books and all that. Same music. But I posted a photo of all of us. Was he half... Okay, yeah, Barry. Yeah, so whenever... Uh, whoever it is that came down for the extreme tour thing that I did with them, um, I remember Barry... Really, it was to go down for Barry's brother. You remember Barry's brother, Stephen, that was working for the IRS? And then he was like... I think he quit because he was sad he missed his cat or something like that. Like, it was weird. I was like, wait, what the hell? Like, it was, like, a true story. Like, he had, like, a hell of a good job. He had, that dude had, that dude had, like, stocks and, and stock shares and all this other stuff, and he had, like, these, like, crazy jobs, but he didn't want to leave his cat. Beauty. The cat's name was Beauty. I remember that. But I think that Barry was coming down to either bring him stuff or, like, move him back home. Something like that. Because he hit me up once to go get lunch with him. And then, like, when I got up, when I called him back, I actually called Barry's brother up. And I was, like, seeing if he wanted to go get lunch. Um, they're like, oh, yeah, he doesn't work here anymore. Yeah, that must have been it. That must have been it. What a strange, strange world. I'm over here drawing meatloaf guy. We're talking about farts and bags.
Tom, do you still got those? Do you still have those? Uh, those signed, the signed black flag books that I gave you way back. It was issue four, the one I got signed by like the whole studio. I think you and you and Steve. I gave you both the dip, like the white and the black edition, I think. Um, but like half the people, it's crazy, man. Like half the people on that signed those books have like, like passed away. Like, um, like Drew Posada and I had Alex on there too. I think um, a lot of them quit comics too. Um, but yeah, all my friends. I ended up getting them copies of like some of my first stuff while I was working at Extreme, and I had I, I walked around the studio and got everyone to sign it, like even editors, the writers. I had everyone sign them. There was like probably 40, 40 sigs on there. <laughs> Troll. I see Dutch. I see Dutch in the chat. Hey Carl, is it um, is it storming up there? Because we have like I don't know if you can hear it. We have like the thunder is going kind of crazy down here. Carl is a uh, fellow Arizonian. What year did we go to San Diego Con? Um, dude, I don't remember. Oh, the year that we just drove down. Um, what was that, like 98, 99? Tom, do you, remember, do you remember when we were looking at original artwork and um, Quentin Tarantino came up and he was, he was like, like, like kind of cutting in between us? To like look at the we were looking at the binder over at uh all the Jim Lee shit and all that it was a uh, god what what booth was that I just remember it was weird because he had like a huge cranium like like Tarantino's head was like um it looked the size of his head when it was super exaggerated in Dust Till Dawn do you remember that Because we were like, damn, that dude's like, his head is like way too big for a human, right? Do you remember that? Jason says, company I work for has a branch in Chandler. We have only two locations. Well, that's cool. Yeah, Chandler's, um, Chandler's interesting. I mean, it, it all kind of blends together up here. You got like uh, Chandler, Tempe, Mesa. There's no real like de defining line between them. You got really the freeway. The freeways are the only thing that kind of divides them a little bit. But yeah, Tom and I, uh, Tom there in chat, um, we were both, we were looking at original artwork at this show at, at San Diego Comic Con. And um, uh, I just remember Tarantino came up behind us and like slapped our shoulder like kind of like a hey guys hey buddy how's it going like but he really just wanted to look at this art this uh these art binders that we were uh thumbing through and then I also kind of I, I almost feel like 
I don't know, man. It, like, that dude he was with, it was kind of weird. It was like a weird situation, like... Weird, like, like uh, this dude might have been Tarantino's booty call, kind of weird. It was just a strange situation. I just remember they were both, like, very tall. The dude was, like, normal, but, yeah, Tarantino's, like, his head was, like, just abnormally large. Like, it, it, it was, like, uh, you felt like you are looking at a caricature, you know? I don't remember who else we... Did we run into anyone else that year, Tom? Because I didn't go again. I didn't go to San Diego again for at least... I mean, maybe three years after that. I went with... Uh, that one dumbass. One of the exes. And... Um, that thing was ruined, man. Yeah, if you're if you're working in comics, don't marry someone who thinks comics are dumb. Just do yourself a favor. Tar uh, Jason Tarantino's hands down, hands down. Uh, so so Jason, I'll let you know. So I'm I'm uh, I'm six two, okay. Tarantino was taller than me, and his head was about the size of my chest. Um, yeah, dude, it, it was, it was weird. I don't, I, it's hard to explain. It's one of those, like, had to be there things. Um, but yeah, Tom, like, the last time, the last time I did San Diego, or no, that's not the last time, the time before last, um, I got Vincent a, uh, I was looking at some posters at a booth, and then uh, he kind of, like, disappeared, and I was looking around, like, Vincent, where'd you get, you know, because he was still younger, you know, it was like, he was like 13, and I see him talking to this guy at a booth next to me, I'm like, okay, he's just talking to this guy, and then Vincent marches over, and he's like, He's like, oh, Dad, look what I got. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I'm looking, I'm like, wait a minute. And it's signed. He goes, yeah, that guy was really nice. He, we're just talking. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, oh, that's freaking Doug Bradley. Like, Vincent has no idea, you know. He's like, I think Doug Bradley, he was, like, bored, you know. So he he, uh, he gave he gave Vincent this pinhead uh, movie poster for uh, Hellraiser, Hellraiser 2. And he, he just was, like, talking to him and, like, here, man, here, kid, like, have this poster, you know? And he signed it for him. And Vincent was all, like, happy. We had to go home and watch the movie. I was like, ah, uh, okay, I'll let him watch this. Probably shouldn't, but, yeah, that was an interesting. That's the, that's the last time that I had, like, any, like, cool, any cool, weird, weird stories, you know, like, celeb stories, um. And that's the show that, um, <laughs> that's the show that I was in line with Ron Jeremy at Starbucks and I kept trying to get that damn photo with him, like incognito. And he noticed and he goes, he goes, he goes, Hey man, are you trying to get a pic? And I was like, yeah, like, damn, I just got caught. You know, like I was literally just trying to be secret, like secretly take a photo behind this dude. And he's like, he goes, come here. And he like, you know, he brought it in real close and hugged me. And then I, I thanked him for getting me through high school. I said, if it wasn't for you, man, I would have never made it. He laughed. I think he was, he was on the phone with some hooker. I don't know. He was calling someone. Robert, how's it going? I just realized this chat... See, this is why I don't talk to her in chat. It turns into me talking about weird stuff. But it's true. Tom was there. Tom was there for some of it.
I was uh, I was Tom's best man at his first wedding, and I was drunk, and I had to say a speech. I don't remember much from that speech. was the uh, mid mid 90s mid 90s right mid 90s uh, CB Smallwood wants me to talk more about weird stuff um, Tom wrote oh here up yeah I'll See, and we'll go over this again when I when I get Tom on a stream. Um, so the Batman movie. Um, uh, who cares? You guys don't know Tom. I'm gonna tell you. So uh, when we were in Tom, how old were how old were we? Do you think before I start the the story? How old how old were we? Like thirteen. Uh, I feel like we were teenagers already. Maybe 12, maybe 13. Were we in junior high or high school already? And you gotta remember, Tom's a year older, Tom's a year older than me too. So everyone I graduated with, I was the youngest out of my, all my classes because uh, my birthday, everyone's a year older than me. Eighth grade, okay, so yeah, so so in eighth grade, uh, you know, Tom and I are just discovering, um, we're discovering porn, okay? And uh, Tom's, your parents are never going to watch this. Tom's parents sometimes would have, uh, you know, a VHS tape, you know, like a rental. And uh, if I remember right, the particular one was borrowed from a family friend. Like, they were doing, like, a trade. Like, some of their other friends had one. They were just trading them, just being funny, you know? And so, like, actual productions, not, like, you know, OnlyFans crap. So, um, uh, I don't remember if I had talked Tom into it or it was probably both of us thinking how we could get that film out of his house so we could watch it at my house like Tom was coming over to stay the night and uh, which he did a lot we used to just stay up and game we play games like uh, you know Sega Genesis or you know Super Nintendo or whatever so um cause Super Nintendo was new then um but anyways he ended up coming over stay the night and uh, he hid that film inside of the the cardboard sleeve of Batman 89 <laughs> and he gets to my house and so we gotta wait my dad you know my dad played music for a living and stuff so my we're waiting for my dad to leave I think to like leave for the night essentially my dad wouldn't get home till like four or five in the morning and so we're waiting for him to leave so we could pop this in and like kind of check it out like see what this this film's all about and um, it's still kind of early in the day. And Tom, we get a phone call for Tom, and my dad's just kind of weird, like, oh, uh, Tom, you gotta, your your mom's on the phone, right? And so, um, Tom gets off the phone, and he's like, oh, dude, like, something or another, they, they figured out that I took the movie. And so, his, I remember his parents came over, and, and um, they're like, I think they were laughing about it and he still stayed the night but it was like they came over and picked up the movie and just kind of like left it alone like it was just this weird like super awkward thing like they knew what we did you know um, but I don't know Tom did you get reprimanded for that I don't think you got I don't think you got in trouble for it But 
yeah, so we have our little we have our little thing about Batman eighty nine. It's like that's that's my memory of Batman eighty nine is uh we never got to see what that damn movie was. Like like all I know all I know is that if if our, our generation is uh what we're Gen X, right? Um if we had the internet, like the stuff that exists today, like as easy as you can get things and, and all that, dude, the planet would have been fucked. Like today, like today wouldn't even exist. Because I think we were so just out there with some of the stuff that we were like interested in, but there was no way to access it. And I think kids today is like, uh, you know, it's all about Call of Duty and, and, you know, gaming and stuff, right? So... We didn't have all that. It was like, um, I don't know. I don't think we were necessarily bad. We were bad kids. Yeah, no, they didn't have, they didn't have none of that. There's no home movie stuff. It was just, uh, it, it was literally, because, I mean, we've, there's several there's several uh times that there was films like we would because they would hide it you know they would hide it inside of a uh inside of a regular film like something you wouldn't watch like uncle buck you know like like all of a sudden uncle buck would not be uncle buck it'd have something else in it um but yeah i remember all that yeah, and I used to go to um, I used to go to Tom's family reunions and stuff. Those were fun, man. I miss those. Those were cool. So, yeah, there was a there was a rent there was a a video rental where we grew up, and it was called um, Big Big D's Video, right? And the owner was a straight up perv. Like he he was one of those that was, uh, you know, even if you were underage. He would kind of like sometimes let slip, let stuff slide, like um, uh, you know, with like the like the porn rentals and stuff. And then I think he got dinged a few times for it, so he uh, he got real strict with it all of a sudden. But he was one of the he was like the like one of the local places that you would go, like like oh dude, like I'm 13 and I want to know what porn is. You know, you would go down and rent a video from Big D's. You know. Um, I knew several people that had like crazy stories about that place. Yeah, at random tests. That's why the Gen X comics were so high. Yeah, high test off. Yeah, they were. That's a fact. That is a fact. Super fact. Too much. Too much truth for my for my chat. Too much truth. Yeah. How many people I got in here watching? Okay, ten people. Okay, here's a story for ten people watching right now. Um, uh, when I I had moved, I had moved away uh, my sophomore year of high school, and when I came back. So here, here, essentially, when I left, I was, uh, I don't know, like, I was like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, okay? And when I came back, like a year and a half later, I was like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, whatever, 6'1"-ish. Um, I get back, and I'm at high school, and Tom and I are going to class, and um, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name drop here, but um, uh, there was a female. Tom, you know where I'm going with this. There was a female who found out I was back, and I guess was excited, and saw me walking with Tom to class the first day I was back. And um, I'll just paint a picture here. Uh, Tom used to have like 
like hair down to his butt crack, okay? Like long hair. Long hair, skinny Mexican dude plays baseball and reads comics, okay? And then you had me, you know, tall white dude. I, I don't know if my hair was dyed blue or whatever. It was a little, I was kind of like some punk rock kid. Um, whatever. So I just get back. This chick's like excited. So we end up hearing secondhand that I guess she saw us walking to class from behind and, and said, uh, Oh, Shelby's back for a day and he's already got some skinny B, you know, hooked up to his hip. And it, it was just funny because it was Tom, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was Tom, you know. Like, I was like, what? Well, that's... It took us a while to kind of figure it out. But I was like, the only person I was walking around with was Tom. And then, was, you know, we kind of put two and two together. And I was like, oh, shit. And speaking of that person, I see that they're um, still very active on on the old the the Facebooks. She don't talk to me much. She had a rough year last year. I think, and the year before, the year right before it too. I think a couple things went down. See, so, yeah, what I'm saying is, uh, apparently Tom has a nice ass, according to other females. serious oh man Tom says she unfriended me right after class reunion that's a shame oh well well I'll let you know you're not missing much you're not missing much um, I got unfriended by quite a few and the funny thing about that is um, I don't know if anyone here has this happen where uh, you get a bunch of people who never spoke to you in high school, like like literally never spoke, like you have nothing in common, and then all of a sudden they're like, like ad crazy, right? Like, oh, I went to school with them, yeah, I remember them, you know, and they start adding you and stuff, and then uh, when they get a glimpse of kind of like who you are and what you're doing, it's either one of two things. They like instantaneously regret the decision of adding you, or they start hitting you up for commissions because they have kids that are into the stuff they used to make fun of you for collecting. And that's always my favorite. You know what I'm talking about. We had quite a few of those. But comics were never cool. Like when we were growing up, comics were never a cool thing. You know, it was almost like you were like a rebel if you were into comic books. Um, because it was like, uh, you know, we were all like baseball players and we played sports, other sports too. And um, it was like a like a stigma, like, like you didn't want to talk about it. And then you would see another player, you'd see another like baseball player at the comic shop getting stuff. And it was sort of like, look the other way when they walk out and when they walk in sort of thing. Like, I didn't see you were here. Such a weird weird time to grow up late 80s and early 90s hockey says they're back had to pick up kids from school yet yeah, hockey didn't miss anything you didn't miss anything Uh, but Ron Jeremy, man, yeah, that was, 
every once in a while I'll, I'll use a photo from from like being with him I'll use a photo like for my uh, profile pic you know but now I just feel like it's just in bad taste I'm like uh, I probably shouldn't use that dudes and dudes dudes put away for a bit What do you guys think? What's what's your opinion right here? Got my uh, my meatloaf guy. I'm gonna actually color him like that too. By the way, just letting you know, he's gonna be colored up like a like like a meat products. He's gonna be colored up by like a like meat wad from uh, <laughs> Aqua Team. I'm like, you think this is weird? You're gonna see weird. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to send this to Carl. So, anyone that doesn't know, you probably already do. Um, I can't even pronounce it right, Carl. Syra Noen is my color flatter. So, yeah, if anyone needs flats, Jason, if you need flats, I use Carl. So speak to Carl. It's a uh, Siren Juan. He li he's local. He gets me stuff the same day within the, uh, usually within, depends on what time I send it to him, but I, I always get it the same day usually, um, and he's super fast, and yeah. I'm always pushing Carl, because Carl just saves me so much time, and he's fast. But yeah, Carl, I tell people, I tell people that color, and they always sound interested, and then they just sort of decide, you know, that they want to do flats themselves. For me, it saves me a lot. I'm very slow f at flats. Um, I usually take, so flats is when you're creating, like, the selectable areas in the uh, the color layer, right, below the, below the liner. And um, I would say a flat page like doing an entire page usually takes me no joke about three hours to do flats alone right and um because it used to take me like like if i did flats and renders in a day it was usually an eight to a ten hour process for me for coloring and um carl sirenawan sirenawan in my chat he gets flats back to me in usually about an hour. It's usually really fast. Like he's he's been doing it so long. He's a, he's a madman. He's insane. He gets stuff done. Um, you know, obviously, I never give him reference. Like, hey, this thing's got to be this flat color. I never use Carl's flats. Um, really, what he's doing is he's creating the areas that you would select. He's making a selectable area, and I always, you know. Um, I never really show the flats off, but um, maybe I will in the preview, the preview book. But um, yeah, I always, I always color flip everything he gives me because I'm like, I don't expect him to know a character that he's never seen before has this particular color scheme or whatnot, you know. So, all right, I'm gonna do. Let's see, where's my? Shit, I'll be right back. Cater Rob, how you doing? Yeah, flats is uh, definitely definitely time consuming. Unless you're good at it, Carl. Carl is like crazy good at it. I am not. I am not good at it. Strike that. I'm very good at it. I just take too damn long. All right. Where's my? Here we go. Where's this thing? 
Alrighty, so uh, Super Ghetto, this is a top loader for a, uh, you know, if you had a Daryl Strawberry 1988 Donruss all-star card you could throw it in there or you could decide to use it for uh, paints or ink splatter which I'm gonna do right now um, <laughs> very specifically a Don Russ Daryl strawberry card um, yeah here before I do that actually I should probably nah I won't do that all right now I'm gonna come in with whiteout when I'm done with this right here but this is a little deja vu from what I was doing last night too because uh, that piece I did last night, um, that Kozor sketch, I, I, I hit it like this too. The funny thing about this right here is <laughs> that this is kind of this is literally like a ghetto method of doing this. You should really be using like um, a toothbrush and like a you know like a toothpick or whatnot to get like a nice even spread. Um, but this is just looking so much cooler than that method uh, that I've been using for the last twenty years. You know, I just kind of this is kind of cool. And also, this is a, this is a uh, a used. Like this, this brush is empty. This is one of those Japanese brush pin sort of things you can get, and um, it has a synthetic bristle. And I think that's why it's getting such a nice. Um, it's not a hair bristle. It's like the uh, the plastic synthetic thing. So. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna hit this a little bit here. No fill. This is, you know, this is a Simon. This is a Simon Bisley uh, effect right here, and there's no Phil Diaz. Shame on Phil. He's probably working. Tom. Uh, question: What? Where would you rate Lobo? Is he, is he in your top ten? As a character, where okay, so where would you rate Lobo, and where would you rate the mask? D, uh, Dark Horse is the mask, like like movie the mask, not the movie, but the comic. And then I have another question for you, Tom. Comic mask over Lobo? Okay. Right, I'm done with this one right here. Um, you know, just curious. Just curious what you think. I've been getting back into... Um, I gotta let this dry for a second, so I'll, I'll show you some Lobo stuff here, Tom. Um, you you already owned the contents of this, but I was gonna show you. So it's weird because um, Lobo Collection One, and then there's uh, Volume One, and then there's Volume Two, right? Um, really, really nice paper quality, like awesome paper quality. Um, so Volume One here has. Uh, the first Lobo series and Lobo's back and then I think it also has the Christmas story in it right that that one shot the Christmas book and then uh, or does it uh, Lobo one through four the paramil yes it does the paramilitary Christmas special one Lobo's back one through four and then the blazing chain of love plus the convention special right 
Uh, so Tom, I was gonna tell you, I, I really recommend you get this book, dude. Like it's it's nice. Like it's a it's a big time upgrade from the original um, books that we bought way back in the day, right? And then um, volume two has uh, that. In, do you remember that infanticide series? Um, it was drawn by the Trencher dude, um, really open style. But so anyways, it has all of those books. Um, it's got, yeah, this is a take on like Archie. Um, it's got some other stuff in it. What else does it have in here? Um, but this one's worth it. This this one's worth it too. And they run about 25 a piece. So this one here has, oh, come on. What does it have in it? Uh, okay, so Lobo Infanticide one through four, Death and Taxes one through four, which I think you bought those. I never bought those books. Lobo number 58 for some reason. And then the Authority Lobo, uh, it's a Christmas book, a Jingle Hell, and Authority Lobo Spring Break Massacre. The Authority books were were Simon's work, the Simon Bisley. And you might not have these, Tom. These were coming out. These were coming out. Um, I feel like in like '05, like they're like like more new, you know, like when we were kind of already off the train. So, but it's good work, dude. So, anyways, yeah, I recommend both of these. Um, yeah, this one just for an up, just for the purpose of upgrades and a readable copy, Volume One and Volume Two. Um, but it is bizarre that it's like by Keith Giffen and Alan Grant. Like there's no mention of Bisley on either of these. Um, I mean, let's be honest. You know, he's what made him cool. So. see here I'm gonna get I gotta get this thing some white ink in here yeah I'm not gonna do a whole lot with this I'm not gonna do a whole lot with this right here So this this thing here, Tom. I don't know if this looks familiar to you. Uh, this goes all the way back to like uh, when uh, not Poyasi, but who was who was the the figure drawing teacher we had? Um, oh God, who was that? Not Miss K. Oh my gosh, what was her name? I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna use the other side of the uh, the Daryl Strawberry card holder. Um, dude, what was her name? Tom and I, Tom and I used to take. Yeah, dude, I don't remember. I, you know what's funny is I have her on Facebook. Uh, she added me on Facebook. She does sculptures now, but we had a teacher. Uh, we had a teacher. An instructor we were going to the junior college for a bit and uh, taking art courses so we were taking a figure drawing class and had a uh, very attractive instructor and um, anyways that's when I purchased this exact one for this purpose um, someone in the someone in that class had told me like oh if you want to do like splatter effects they're like what you do is you let you get this this pro white stuff and you let it dry out um, on just a, like this, like a plastic uh, painter's, you know, it's a plastic painter's um, palette, I guess. I'll just call it a palette. Um, and then you just rejuvenate it with water, literally, is what they said. And it's true. So I've had this thing for, I mean, it's going 28, 29 years, and I'm still using it the same way. Like, it, this is... 
like the the whiteout on the bottom of this thing is older than my my boys, and they're both grown adults. So yeah, but anyways, so. Yeah, same effect. This is cool. I like this. And uh, yeah, same thing. So just, you know, I'm doing the... Uh, I'll probably just hit it here and then I'll be done with it. There you go. Um, same thing, using the card the card loader. You can use a credit card too. I mean like you can use credit card or whatever. I like this because it gives my fingers more room to to mess around with this thing. Um, yeah, and now I got a damn mess in front of me, so hold on a second. And oh yeah also so this is a a whiteout brush pen. Um, I purposely, this one might actually not even be all the way empty. Um, so I'm using this the same way. It has a synthetic brush brush tip on it, just like the black one. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun little, fun little thing to use. The synthetic bristles give you a, a nice, uh, more of a unique splatter effect. about done with this just about done with this this shit um uh white out pens these are great uh mark silvestri is one that suggested this to me it's the the poscas um they work pretty well um just like any other white out pen though they can sometimes pick up the black ink under it if you're using like a very thick opaque uh uh I don't know what it, whatever it is that makes the black, you know, the pigment, um, it can create some issues with it. So, but yeah, I kind of come in with this one for final touch, and I even do it on my on my uh, my finished pencil stuff. I will come in with one of these and just kind of break up the, you know, like veins and stuff like that. And that, that's one thing too, the, uh, the pro white and the pro black inks, um, sometimes uh, if you hit them with, with something wet, it can even be a paintbrush, um, it will lift and reactivate that ink. They don't necessarily dry. They dry, but they can be reactivated. That's one thing that I don't like about them. Um, but they're pretty uniform, like for the most part, they're pretty uniform. Uh, on the finished product, they look super nice. All right. Uh, let's see what's going on in chat.
Sorry guys, I gotta re I gotta re uh refresh here. Whiskey Sierra, how you doing? Um Oh thank you. Thanks for the compliment. Yeah, lots of lots of uh, lots of channels, and uh, anyone who wants, feel free to feel free to drop your uh, your channels and that channel links and that for uh, for whiskey. Yeah, if you want, go ahead and uh, sub here. I do a lot of live art, um, live. You know, I mean, I just call them boring art streams. Really, it's me bantering about weirdness from the past, and uh, you know, just showing like basically just people being susceptible to my stories and watching me draw i mean it's kind of what it is um no no variety show <laughs> no variety show although i do go on a few of them so yeah but thank you for stopping by i appreciate it yeah if you want if you want to sub feel free to sub um, i'm always looking for new subscribers so yeah, but anyone else who, you know, pretty much, I think there's there's probably four or five people in chat who uh, also have channels. Um, Unhinged Entertainment there right below you. Um, uh, Jason, he does he does live art streams as well. Um, uh, Sironaron, if you scroll up, uh, does coloring streams. Um, Hockey does streams, yeah. Maybe everyone in here except for Tom Rohn. Tom Rohn is just old, like me. We went to school together, so. But yeah, everyone else, I think, has streams. Yeah, that's one goal. I'm going to have to... I'll have to get Tom on a... I'll have to get Tom on chat with me. Yeah, some live chat. Live face-to-face, -face, talking about nonsense of our youth. But um, yeah, this is my this is my weirdo creation here. Um, don't really know what else I'm gonna do with them besides uh, some weird self promotion. So yeah, and uh, let's see here. Um, one, two, three. Sorry guys, I'm like staring at this page. Um, trying to figure something out here. All right, yeah, anyways, that's my weirdo pinup. Um, I think I'm gonna log out of here. I've been on here for a bit. Let's see this, let me refresh here. Oh, geez, two hours. Way too long. I was supposed to be on here for like 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jason says, unrelated to anything, I need to buy a clutch shirt. Uh, yes, yes, you do. You're talking about the band, right?
Um, Joe Ball says, I only simp for Shelby. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing uh, recognizing the true senpai. The true senpai of uh, YouTube. Here, I'm going to flip this around. You guys want to see my face? Did I just break everyone's computer? All right. Um, yeah. Anyways, for reals, I'm going to head out. Um, Carl, I'm going to... I gotta let the thing dry. I'm gonna send you some flats tonight. Um, I'm just gonna wait for this freaking thing to dry. So, anyways, just reading stuff. Hey, you guys see? I got some new He-Mans today. I don't know if you can see them up here. Maybe not. They did a, they did a brand new sculpt of Merman. This one. So new sculpt for twenty one of Merman, and geez, this thing's way too high. What's going on here? And then uh, Faker, Faker finally came out. So yeah, these are target finds. These are coming out. These are coming out right now. Um, so yeah, these two. There is also another. Um, there's another, um, let's see, these two, oh god, you're not ready, you're not ready, are you? Um, all this stuff's gonna fall. Anyways, um, a new Evil Lynn came out, okay? It's a repaint. The other one is yellow. I don't know if you can see it back there, but it's yellow. Uh, I can't see it, so you can't. Anyways, this one here is like a uh, more of the light. It's like a beigey, jaundice -y color. So it's just a repaint. And then uh, <laughs> uh, Fisto, Joe Ball's favorite He-Man character ever. Fisto came out. So yeah, he just came out. Um, very exciting. Fisto is out now. Yeah, so Fisto and, Fisto and Faker are the two. And then also, um, man, I'm not going to buy them on eBay. They're like 30 bucks a pop. I'm going to I'm gonna just try to find them in the wild. There's uh, brand new head sculpts for Skeletor and for He-Man. And the easiest way to see that it's the a new head sculpt is what they did was they used the old retro heads. Because these ones are re-sculpted. Um, the Skeletor and the He-Man both, like he man showing his teeth on this one, and the Skeletor has his mouth like wide open. And um, the new ones, the mouth is closed completely on both. And they gave, they gave, uh, they gave, <laughs> they gave uh, He-Man the original uh, bowl cut, which was kind of cool. So yeah, anyways, yeah, this one here, I'm gonna show you, I'll show you an example. So this one here, Okay, so, uh, last year, uh, Merman, last year Merman, right here, right? Last year's Merman. This is the re-sculpt here, and this one, this one's a callback to the original Merman that came out, so, yeah, so last year's, this year's, um, so I think they're going to start doing that. They're going to do the same thing with Beastman, too, from what I... What I read. Yeah, dude, it's... This is what happens, man. When you get some comic book money, you just start buying toys. And it just... It's... Um, you know, but my daughter loves it. Oh, and then the boots. You got the yellow boots. Like the like the animated series. Um, there's a new Beastman coming out where he's got the shoulder pads that go crazy high. Like... Um, He's got the shoulder pads like the original concept design. So he looks like, uh, who are those wrestlers? The Legion of Doom? They look like the Legion of Doom. Yeah. And they both, the only thing is, they got the same coral sword. So a lot of the accessories are the same. Um, but, oh, but the new He-Man, um, 
the re-sculpt, it also comes with the power sword is complete. Like, so this He-Man and this Skeletor, it's where the sword's cut in half, and one has the uh, the Lego bits that can go into the other to make one power sword, so one side's purple and one is gray. The new He-Man figure has an entire sword that's gray, so it doesn't have that weirdo thing in the... Yeah, these are the Origins figures, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to touch the Revelation shit. I have no interest in it. Although, the Battle Cat is pretty awesome. I, I do want it, but... I don't know, 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah, 40 bucks for that. Um, but, anyways... They're fun to collect. They're fun to collect. Put one in chat if you were staring at my culo when I was getting those figures. Just put a one in chat. No judgment. Alright guys, I'm out of here. Um, I suggest you all go raid in another stream. There's gotta be something on, so. Alright.